G'day guys, Ben here from Solar and Sat, and we have this absolutely monstrous Isuzu NPS with a huge power system in it. Let's give you a bit of a rundown. A quick overview on the specs. We have over 1300 watts of solar. We have 120 amps of alternator charging at 24 volt, so 240 amps, 12 volt equivalent. And we have 1,200 amp hour of lithium batteries at 24 volts, so 2,400 amp hour, 12 volt equivalent. And to allow them to use all that power, we've got a 5 kVA Victron MultiPlus installed as well. The power system in it is absolutely monstrous. So it's been a joint build between All Terrain Warriors, Dynamic Engineering, and ourselves. Obviously, All Terrain taking care of all the truck side of things, the suspension, the super singles, all the stuff they're well and truly known for. And they've put on their big roof rack on there that lets us fit 480 watts of Sherby solar panels. So All Terrain Warriors hooked them up for us. They've been put in series, and that obviously gets it up to 24 volt, which is gonna be important, and I'll talk about that soon. Dynamic Engineering has then built their Matilda camper on the back of it. It's a pop top with internal living. It's got a bathroom in there. Totally wicked piece of kit, so Dynamic Engineering's taking care of that. Then they've done their Garmin digital switching system in there, and that allows the customer to control their 240 volt loads off that 12 volt based Garmin digital switching system, which actually plug into the Victron Servo system and provide one sort of all-in-one solution that shows you all your switching, all your percentages, your water tank monitoring, all that in two separate locations in the truck, allows the customer to switch things in two different areas. Very cool piece of kit. To reiterate, 1300 watts of solar, we've got the equivalent of 240 amps of alternator charging, and then 2400 amp hour equivalent battery bank. Now obviously this has been a monster of a build, and I'm about to throw a whole bunch of information at you because people ask me to go into detail all the time, so this is for you guys that have been asking. Obviously there's a lot here, so I'm going to break it into three parts. We're going to go the DC system, we're going to the AC system, and then we'll talk about the communications and integration side of things. So let's lead with the DC system first. So talking about the battery bank, obviously I'm just going to talk in 24 volt now, so if you're used to comparing to 12 volt systems, just bear in mind that you double these numbers in terms of amperages to compare it to your 12 volt system. So it's, it's a monstrous setup. It's 1200 amp hour at 24 volt. So like I said, that's the same as 2400 amp hour at 12. Now, obviously massive battery bank. It's all well and good to throw in a big battery bank, but at the end of the day, if you can't charge it quick enough, you're wasting your time. So what we've done is we've married it up to three of the new Victron Orion XS 1400 DC to DC chargers, and they're running at 80% capacity. Obviously there's a 24 volt, 180 amp rapid power alternator in there. It's capable of more, but checking temperatures and bearing in mind that it's a continuous load when the customer's driving along, we found that pulling 120 amps off that fella is very sustainable, keeps all the temperatures happy, and we're not gonna be overstressing anything there. So 120 amps of alternator charging off those three DC DC chargers. Then we have three of the Victron 100-30 MPPTs. Obviously, once again, being 24 volt, we can run a lot more solar through them. So the three separate solar arrays are the 480 watts, the two Sherby 240 watt panels on the truck's roof rack from ATW. And then we've got the three 200 watt panels in a line on the Matilda camper and two 130 watt panels as well on the Matilda camper. So we've got two series, three series and two series respectively, gets our voltage up sufficiently high to charge a 24 volt system. And it gives the customer 1,300 340 watts of solar. So approximately 40 amps of solar charging at 24 volt off that array as well. So pretty decent sized solar system combined with a very, very healthy alternate charging system. It gives us 150 amps of off-grid charging speed, which means a realistic charge time of approximately eight hours if they're driving along in the sun, vehicle running. So it means they can actually take advantage of that big battery bank. Now the batteries themselves, of course, need to be able to take that as well. So we've custom made them here. They're fully bus barred internally and each of them has a 200 amp BMS inside, once again, rated at 24 volt. So 400 amps of potential discharge speed and recharge speed. So we're nowhere near those limits. Those batteries are, are relaxing basically, even at these high numbers. So we're never gonna be working them too hard. In fact, even if one of them were to shut down or one of the main fuses, cause we fuse them each individually, were to pop, you can actually technically limp along on one battery fairly happily, as long as you manage your load a little bit. That's the DC side of things. There is obviously the MultiPlus, which integrates, integrates DC and AC, but we're gonna talk about the AC side now because this system is a little bit more AC heavy than our typical systems through this workshop are. Obviously, once you get to these larger sizes, larger inverters, 5,000 watt inverter, to actually take advantage of that, Running it through a singular 16 amp circuit on a caravan like is typical is obviously doing it an injustice because you can't take advantage of the full 5,000 watts. What you need to do is break your AC system up into separate sub circuits and that allows you to, to take advantage of that larger AC output. So what we've done is we've had dynamic engineering run four AC cables for us, one for the aircon, one for the hot water system, and then two separate GPO sub circuits, each obviously on 16 amp breakers, two and a half millimeter squared. 
um, and then we've fed that off obviously a 40 amp main switch. So the idea there is the customer can actually take advantage of that massive output of the inverter. And when they're plugged into mains, using the full Victron's uh, power assist functionality, which for those of you that don't know, basically allows the inverter to take 10 or 16 amps from mains and add that to the inverter's output. So in theory, the customer could actually run about 8,600 watts off this system if they're plugged in and the inverter's helping it out. So absolutely massive output to tie in with the massive battery bank and massive charging system. Uh, pretty cool. And then we've actually integrated that. So moving a little bit more into the integration and communication side of things, we've used a Finder DC coil AC relay to allow for the Garmin digital switching system, which is obviously 12 volt DC base, to allow it to control some AC loads. So the idea is you've got that touch screen for all the switching. They can actually switch the 240 volt hot water system through that. So as they're driving along, if they know they're gonna be pulling up in 30 minutes, 45 minutes, whatever, they can flick that switch, start heating the hot water before they pull up. It makes it all controllable all through that one sort of fascia that Dynamic Engineering was installing for them. So that's the, the sort of the AC system as well as a little bit of its integration sort of handled. Then we also obviously fitted up a Starlink for these guys. So they had a Gen 3, like your residential style unit. We've made up some custom aluminium brackets, which we've obviously cut, bended, folded, got it all ready, handed that to Dynamic Engineering, where they've powder coated it up in the same color as the rest of the stuff on the roof, just to keep it all bespoke and tied in. And then what we've done is we've fitted a 24 to 48 volt Victron DC-DC converter, which we've tuned to, it would have been either 56 or 58 volt, um, whichever one of those that, that Starlink uh, router runs at. We searched it up and we made sure we tied it in perfectly, but basically they're adjustable. So we tied it in to match what that router is supposed to receive from its mains adapter. And this was basically our way of converting it to run directly on DC power to save the customer's energy overhead. They want to use that Starlink all the time. And it allowed us to use the standard Starlink router, which also has some spare ethernet ports, which we took advantage of as well. And we've fed into the Victron Serbo GX via ethernet. So it's not a wireless connection. It's actually wired into the ethernet port, which keeps that Victron system online all the time for remote access for these customers. If they put it in storage, they can have it send them an email alert if their battery gets down to a certain level, or it can send us an alert if there's a fault or anything like that. So it keeps it all managed and looked after and keeps it all controlled and online all the time. So very nicely integrated. Everything speaks to everything. Very, very clean, bespoke installation. That pretty much summarizes the electrical internet sort of integration side of this installation. It was pretty cool. We got to work directly with all-terrain warriors, a lot with dynamic engineering, and obviously having us handle the electrical. This customer has a very, very one-of-a-kind sort of build in there with heaps and heaps of off-grid capacity. They actually can use more power off-grid than most people can use when they're plugged into power at a caravan park. So very, very cool. Made for an awesome electrical system in one heck of a truck. Feel free to ask any more questions or give us a call if you want something similar to this or you have your own pretty interesting build you want us to take on. No job is too small or too complex. Give us a call at Solar and Sat Bundaberg.